It's the Daily Dog. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Dog. I'm so happy that you are joining me today because it's a Friday, y'all, and we've made it to the end of another week, and we deserve, quite frankly, a great Friday, a masterpiece Friday where we listen to some great tunes together. And I am happy that you are here because we are going back to some music by Yes. It's going to be a double header. I got two songs for you today. We're going to be doing Starship Trooper and Homeworld, both live recordings. And I am, I'm pumped to get into it. So let's start with Starship Trooper. Uh, this suggestion comes to us from our friend Ray. And I originally listened to this for the first time on our fan favorites last month in April. I listened to the original studio recording. And I very much was intrigued by the piece, loved its little three-part sections written by different members of the band. And it was suggested to me by the Council of Dugs, like, hey, if you like that, uh, the Keys to Ascension live version of this is especially choice. So that's the one that I'm going to listen to today. Uh, Starship Trooper originally was from the Yes album. Uh, from 1971. It is divided into three sections called Life Seeker, Disillusion, and Verm. And uh, John Anderson was the main uh, writer of the first section, Life Seeker. Chris Squire wrote most of the second section, Disillusion, and Verm is a theme from Steve Howe. Um, John Anderson uh, had said that Starship Troopers was a great title of a book, by uh, Robert Heinlein, and he liked the idea of a starship trooper being another guardian angel or Mother Earth. The third verse, he says, was all about, you know who I am, just take care of my soul. So it was as though I was writing about my search for truth and search for an understanding of what God truly is. So like I said, y'all, we're going to be listening to the live version of Starship Trooper from Keys to Ascension. Keys to Ascension is Yes's fourth live album, released in 1996. The album marked the reuniting of the classic Yes lineup, which had not performed together since 1979. So we've got John Anderson on vocals, Steve Howe on guitars, Chris Squire on the bass, Rick Wakeman on the keyboards, and Alan White on the drums. But before we start, y'all, I have to have my Friday cocktail. I have brought back out our Red Breast. This is our Irish whiskey and I am about out of this so this is going to be uh have to be replaced soon and we really enjoy this particular uh Irish whiskey it is one of our favorites and I will pour a little bit in there to have along with our listening today okay corks in it's a beautiful little color there for our uh, for our red breast cheers everybody Oh, it smells so good, too. Mm. Mm. We will uh, have more of that as we go. But let's uh, let's dive in. This is going to be Keys to Ascension, the live version from, um, uh, from Keys to Ascension. Y'all ready? I am. Here we go. Live recording. I don't think I've ever listened to Yes Live recordings before. I've been told they are especially awesome, but I've only done studio uh, versions so far. So, I'm into it. Remember that. I wish I could hear the bass a little bit more clearly, like you can hear it in the original mix. It's there, but it's it's uh, lower in the mix. And, you know, and this is what, 25 years for John after originally recording it? The vocals are still great.
the groove sort of subtly changes a little bit there. Alan is so great on percussion back there. Makes it sound like double time for a second, and then he kind of sinks back into the groove. Okay, back to where they kind of started. An E chord and an A chord. Mother Earth, hold firmly onto me, catch my knowledge higher than the day. You know, earlier this week I went to go see uh, Haken and Symphony X, and Haken did a cover of a Yes song, and he said, sing along! And I'm like, that's sing along with John Anderson and, and Ross Jennings. It's high for me. I could barely get out anything. I was in my falsetto range. Loneliness is a power that we possess to give or take away. Take, it, take what I say in a different way, and it's easy to say that this is all confusion. That is my experience with most of John's lyrics. <laughs> flat chord and then go right back into that A um, to start uh, the next section again. And the meter changes are sneaky as well, aren't they? Awesome to know that they're up, they're playing this live, and uh, just wish I could have been there. Sounds great. Building up. Not yet. Chris on the bass has got like a, an inversion down there, prolonging this progression. He's down there. Right? Just holding this through. Ah, 
I remember. I remember. This is that last section. Vroom. Right? G chord, then an E flat chord, and then a C major chord. All major chords. Maybe this is why the Council of Dugs told me that I gotta listen to Keys to Ascension. I don't remember this solo. Woo! Um, that note is in every single chord, right? It's a G, it's in that chord, it's in that chord, right? So the G is the pivot but we've got chromatics happening around them because these are chromatic third, chromatic medium relationships with these chords. They're all major, but they don't fit in the same key. What's that? Rick Wakeman, Rick Wakeman, Rick Wakeman on the keys, y'all. It is a circular progression that this is on. This little three uh, chord motive, this descending thirds motive. Once you get into a circular progression like this, it's similar to the end of Hey Jude, or, um, <laughs> you know, some of these progressions that can just go on and on and on and just set up for solos or just let us chill out with them for a while. That G is staying in every one of those chords, right? We've got um, that's a C, a B natural, a B flat, and a C. As chromatics, while the G is in the G and the E flat chord and the C major chord, it's a really cool progression. We have to steal that. Double time for us. I love the extension of this last section for all these solos. Sounds great. It's invigorating, it's uplifting, it, um, it's making me feel in a much better mood than I was earlier. You know, it's uplifting, it's transformative. Why 
not throw a little flat seven, flat six, flat seven, one into it at the end? They threw everything else in. <laughs> You're welcome, John. Holy crap. Keys to Ascension. Note to, to Doug, uh, this is a live album you need to listen to. Okay? Okay. Wow. That is great. And I read that they recorded these, uh, I think it was two or three nights that that was recorded. Um in a relatively small venue, um, y'all, uh, that, uh, you know, I can only imagine having, um, you know, 500, 600 people in a, in a small venue, uh, for that live performance. Absolutely incredible. I have a couple of thoughts before we move on to Homeworld, y'all. Uh, there's a lot that's written about this particular piece. And I had, once I announced that I was going to be doing this one this Friday, I got notes from several people going, oh, here's this book and here's this book. And here's, here's my thoughts on it. I'm like, I love this. I love getting to learn, uh, with all of you, right? It's Cause, um, <clears throat> You know, a lot of you have lived with these pieces a lot longer than I have. And so I welcome your notes and your thoughts on this. Uh, from our friend Ash, uh, he sent me a note and he says, um, it's unclear to him why uh, Yes opted for the Germanic term, Verm. Uh, uh, it's a W and a an U with umlauts and then R and M for this last section. He says, one thinks of serpents and lizards as well as worms. Uh, it's been a convention in Western mythologies to view serpents as bad, as harbingers and agents of evil, like in the Garden of Eden or Cleopatra's asp or dragons, etc. And he says it's not so in other cultures. Given the circularity of the basic chord progression of this last section, he is inclined to think of, uh, oh, I'm going to say this wrong, Ouroboros. Uh, a symbol of self uh, renewal and rebirth. I think it's like this serpent that's kind of circled around and eating its tail or about to. Um, it's a symbol of uh, self renewal and rebirth rather than something that is negative or unpleasant. And I think that the guitar solo at the end of Verm con conveys a sense of something reinvigorated and uplifting. The Ouroboros is also closely associated with alchemy so with transformation and perhaps with evolution and movement towards something better than we currently are john was quoted as saying that this what he was searching for truth in this so i thank you ash for providing me with those thoughts i also found uh this book from 1994 by a guy named thomas mosbo and uh, he was recounting an interview with john anderson in 1977 discussing uh, uh, this piece. And I want to read a little bit of it to you. It's really interesting. Um, he says that uh, I was writing about my inner self's vision of myself. Sounds like John. And uh, interpreting that each person has this soul, if you want to call it, a certain thing as seeing everything that that person is and knows everything about that person. And that's when I sing, though you've seen me, please don't tell a soul what you can't see can't be very whole. You don't have to tell me. I understand that you know that I'm not to know. Okay, what is John talking about? He says, there is a messenger within you that is always interreacting with the life form. There's a point in you within yourself that knows you. Uh, some people call it God. And it's this point where you say, um, mother life, hold firmly onto me, spread my knowledge higher than the day, release as much as only you can show. Because no matter how much you want to get clearer visions of what you are up to, you're only going to get a certain amount. But in fact, 
the little bit that you get is so incredibly enormous that that is what it's all about. You forget about the rest, these things that you uh, thought you wanted. Uh, the writer goes on to say, again, important themes from traditional mysticism are seen here. The search for spiritual truth, the sensing of God within us, and an acceptance of our own limitations, even at the point of experiencing oneness within the universe. And he says, this last point is very important. Anderson has successfully maintained a certain humility about his own spirituality, although he is never afraid to express his spirituality in his music. Um, he does not present it in such a way as to say, I have all the answers, listen to me. Instead, he has consistently offered his own insights and experiences to others as a fellow seeker. And I think it's one of the reasons why uh, this uh, piece has such longevity, as it's just uh, universal and sticks with us here, y'all. Wonderful, wonderful. I am so happy to have listened to the Keys to Ascension version of that. But we're going to move on, y'all. It's a, it's a Masterpiece Friday, and I don't disappoint. We're going to listen to another Yes song. And this one comes to us from our friends Barbara and Marcos, who have been waiting for this one for a long time. It's called Homeworld, and then in parentheses, The Ladder. And it is from the album, The Ladder, the band's 18th album released in 1999. Uh, as I read in, the song was originally called Climbing the Ladder, uh, and it is the result of a partnership with a video game uh, developer who wanted the band to license a track for their strategy game that they were calling Homeworld. And uh, Anderson's lyrics then include themes of science fiction, of space, and the search for a new home. So I thought that uh, Starship Trooper from Classic Yes and Homeworld from uh, late 90s Yes would be a nice uh, little mix for us today. On this album and on the live recording that we're going to listen to, we've got John Anderson on vocals and percussion. Steve Howe is on guitars, Billy Sherwood is on guitars and backing vocals, Chris Squire is on the bass and backing vocals, Alan White is on the drums, and Igor Koroshev is with the band as uh, the keyboardist. I am using the live performance of this from the House of Yes DVD, which was a live uh, album that they produced in the year 2000. This was recorded at the House of Blues in Las Vegas. And uh, this is going to be a first time listen for me, so I am uh, eager to listen to it. This is Homeworld by Yes. Here we go. This is time, and the time is now, and it's right for me. It's right for me, and the time is now. That's pretty. The lyrics don't look like my lyrics. Do I have the right song? I'm gonna stick with it. Right Title looks right. And the word is love. There's a time, and the time is now, and it's right for me. Singular, right singular me. vocalist. And the time is now. Hmm. A chord that they ended on. What is that from? That's not what I see here. Is that a a different tune? I love those little toys. Little rattler shakers. Rain sticks. That sort of thing. Now the lyrics match up. Nothing can bridge our soul's devotion fast enough together as the power proves you right, right enough to let you begin. 
It makes sense when he sings it, but it doesn't really make sense when I read it. past, Seekers fought to realize Skyward shone like beacons, a question of origin. So again, it's, it's searching for home, searching for a place to belong. 10,000 millions flee to the Western life, the dreamers represent this arc of peace. And the way that John sings those notes, those lines that are on the same note, that's harder than it, than it sounds, y'all, to maintain your tuning by singing those repeated notes as these chords change. Similar to the last song, it's an A chord and an E chord. get so good at air drumming. <laughs> okay. seen the passion that's in the hope that everyone will find their way into the secret of the home of your heart. That's as straightforward as you're going to hear John talking to us, y'all. That's, that's beautiful. John believes in us. You should believe in us, too. Just what keeps us so alive, just what makes us realize our home is our world, our life. Home is our world. It's a relative term. Home is where the heart is, right?
Get it, Steve. It's just so much fun to watch these people having such an immense, great time playing music, isn't it? You can't help but groove with them. We follow the sun. We follow the source. Right? Whatever that may be for, for each of us individually. Acoustic was an unexpected touch. I love this guy. I love this band. What can I say, y'all? Hmm. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I've been doing this for almost a year and a half now and I have said publicly that um, the uh, the reaction that is still my favorite is close to the edge and uh, that that remains true by the way um, there has not been a band among all of the bands that I have been reviewing that consistently uh, reaches me on an emotional level like these guys do and um, it it comes with uh, such a well-matched arrangement of of musicians that all complement each other and it just brings the music higher and it, it makes me emotional the end of this is is just so heartwarming truth is a simple place we would think, right? Truth is a simple place here for us all to see. Reach as it comes to you, as it comes to me, as I will always need you inside my heart. Uh, what can you say, right? And then he says this, this is how it ends. Peace is a word we teach, a word that we teach, right? It's not something that we achieve very easily, right? Peace is a word we teach, a place for us all to reach, right? Sing as it sings to you, as it sings to me, as I will always need you inside my heart. Uh, this is music that I desperately needed to hear today. Um, it has um, put me in a better mood. It's made me at least temporarily more optimistic uh, about uh, the world around us and um, 
and feel more connected to these musicians and to the people around me and to all of you. And so, you know, sometimes when we get disillusioned and confused and jaded a bit uh, with all the information that's coming at us, sometimes we just need to take, uh, excuse me, microphone. <laughs> sometimes we need to take a, um, a few minutes or longer to, uh, to reconnect, to reprioritize, to meditate, to center yourselves, whatever you need to do. For a lot of people, it's listening to yes. And, uh, and if that's helped you today as it's helped me, then uh, you're welcome. And I thank you for being along for the ride. What a profound a uh, bit of music and a really, really fun Masterpiece Friday. It has been a fun time to be with you all. I hope that you enjoyed this uh, music as, as much as I did. We will be back with more uh, in the coming weeks for sure. But man, it's it's great to every time I get to come back to Yes. Such a great time. Thank you all for being with me on this Friday. That is it for today. We'll be back next week. Thanks, y'all. We'll see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.